I'm going to be showing you how to achieve this 2D infographic look in Blender. I will start with modeling, then I will do the material part, and finally wrapping up it with an animation. Please note, it is not for complete beginners, but I will explain each step which I am doing. Before starting up the scene, I need to do some settings. First, go to your render engine, set it to EV. For the second setting, scroll down at the bottom. You will find color management, set it to standard. First, I will be creating his head. So I started with a UV sphere, selected its lower part and move it down a bit. Pull out his jaw and chin with moving the vertex down with proportional editing turned on. I am just shaping the head with proportional editing. Now, I'm gonna make his eyebrows. For that, I'm adding a mesh plane and rotate it facing front. Then enable the magnet option and check these options. Now your mesh plane will stick on the surface of the mesh. In edit mode, I am making the eyebrow shape. Here, I added a mirror modifier with the head as the mirror object. I added a subdivide modifier and then a solidify modifier set its value so that it gets extruded outwards. Then put the solidify above the subdivide. In this step, I am quickly adding some material to the objects for visual color representation. Like I had made a head material, assign to the head mesh and give a viewport display color. Same to the eyebrows as well. For the nose, I will extrude these faces, but first I will add a loop cut to have some more geometry for it. Now, extrude it and shape the nose. I am not going in too much details or precision because it's an infographic character anyway. Now let's make his eyes. Add it a circle mesh and rotate it. Extrude the vertices inwards two, three times and then hit M to merge at center. Now add a solidify modifier and give a material Because I am using magnet here, our eyes lose its circular shape. In order to get it back, I will enable loop tools. Select the outer edges and right click and go to loop tools and then circle. Mirror it as well. Now to make his ears, I added a cylinder mesh object and scale it down on Z axis. Place it at its position. Give it the same material. Shape it and add the mirror modifier. Now I will move on to create the beard and hair for him. So this time I am adding a mesh plane and enabled the magnet tool. Trace the shape on the surface. I added mirror modifier to this as well. When you smooth shade the mesh, here, you see some shading errors. Actually, this is because some of the normals are inverted. To fix it, hit F3 and type recalculate outside and hit enter. Now I am moving to his hair part, same as before tracing the shape. When you are working this read apology on an existing mesh, you can use this amazing modifier called Shrink Wrap Modifier and set the target to the object which you want to project the mesh on. To smoothen the surfaces, I use Smooth Vertices option. Actually, I had set a short key on Q to smooth the vertices.
I applied the mirror and shrink wrap modifier. Now I am going to add a solidify modifier to give some depth and apply the hair material on it. Let's again delete the half of the mesh and add a mirror modifier so that I can easily edit on one side and it mirrors on the other. Make sure you enabled clipping. Now you can shape the beard and hair the way you like. I am adding another UV sphere for the hairstyle. Assigning the same hair material and edit it with proportional editing. Now selecting its bottom faces, duplicating and extruding to make the neck part. Now the head is ready, but before I make the body, let's add a human armature for the body size reference. Here, I added a human meta rig. It's an add-on which comes with Blender called Rigify. Now I am scaling down the head and placing it in the correct position. Let's start with the body, but first I need to add some anatomy references to get started. For the upper body, I added a cylinder object, set the vertices to 8, and now shape it close to the reference. Selecting these faces to extrude his arms. White, I am editing the mesh I constantly looking at with the subdivision modifier on, so that I get a better understanding of the shape. Keep it in mind that I am creating an infographic looking character, so I would not go too much anatomical details. Now adding another cylinder for his legs or pants. Delete the bottom face and extrude the shape according to the reference, trying to refine the shapes better. For the arms, again, we'll add the cylinder object and shape it accordingly. I pressed V to detach the edge. Here I extrude the mesh for his hands. The hand will consist of only a thumb and joined fingers, because again, an infographic character with minimalistic features. I add a loop cut here and extrude these faces to create his thumb. Now position the hand where it has to be, apply the materials. 
Now I quickly add some small details to refine the model. Finally, model his shoes, duplicate some vertices from his pants, and place it down and make the shape of the shoe. I will start with the sole shape. I made the shape from its lower part and connect that to the top with bridge option in loop tools. Adding some more details to the shoes. Added a cylindrical geometry to represent his underlegs. Now I will be modeling slight facial details like his mouth by adding the mesh plane and shape it. Other detailings we will do later in the video. Materials are actually very easy for this type of look. Let me add another view and go to Shader Editor. Select this option to get a render preview in the viewport. I am adding a point light in the scene. Give it a good strength. Before diving into the actual material, let me first explain you about the shader we use. So there is shader, which is principle shader is linked to the output here as you can see. If we somehow gets the shader's black and white values as color inputs, we can add any colors to this, which may not be photoreal, but very artistic. And if we can crush this fading, we get cool cartoon shader vibes. To do it, Blender has a cool node called Shader to RGB, which only works in EV by the way. I don't know why they are not implementing it in cycles. So add this shader in between the links, and you may think what has changed? But when I add a color amp, now these black and white colors are linked to these black and white colors. So now I can change the color at whatever I want. And when I set it to constant, then I get a very artistic look. So select the head material and between this link, add a shader to RGB node. Let's place it apart and add my favorite color ramp node. Set the linear to constant. And now we will get a cartoon style shatter. You can adjust the sliders. I will leave them at here. Let's move a light a bit. Now, I can set the skin color and also the shadow color. I will change these values a lot in this video because I will see what colors looks best. Same step you have to repeat for other materials, like his hair material. I'm giving a nice deep blue color look for his hair. For the eyes, just delete every node other than that output. It will use black anyways. Now for his chin shadow, I duplicated the skin material and set both sliders to the shadow colors. With the same method, give the materials to his shirt, pants, and shoes. For the shoes, I selected this border and assign a new material and added a white color material. Now we can add some more detailings, like ear detailing, like most of infographic character ears are. Add a solidify modifier and mirror the object for the other ear. For the t-shirt, I will give a separate material for the roll-up sleeve, maybe a lighter color. For the pants, I will add some details like stitching lines, pocket lines, very minimalistic.
When done, join all the details and add a solidify modifier. And now, given it a new material with lighter colors. For the shoes, I want to give some zigzag shoelaces. For this, I am selecting some faces from the shoe mesh, duplicating it, and separating it by hitting P and selection. Now, cutting the shape with knife tool. You can hit K to activate knife tool. Slice the mesh in order to make the edges. My goal is to extract an edge flow, which I will later convert it to curves. Select the edges and duplicate it and separate it from the mesh. Delete the previous one and convert that to curves. Now you can give some thickness to the curves. Scale down the size a bit. Duplicate it for the other shoe. Now it is looking cool. For rigging and animation, I will be using Mixamo but you can rig it with Rigify add-on. Actually, Mixamo can easily generate a good rig for the model, which you can animate in Blender if you want. Mixamo is simple, just upload your model, place the markers where they belong, and hit Next to start processing the rig for you. When it's done, click on Next, and now you can choose whatever animations they have on their website. I will choose this walking animation. Click on this checkbox to place the character at the center in the whole animation. Download the character as FBX file. Bring the animation in Blender, select the rig, and hit Alt-S to reset the scale. Now you have to reassign the materials for this model. If you have the Mixamo add-on in your Blender, you can go to its settings and click on Create Control Rig. It will generate an IK rig for your model, which can use to animate the character. I assigned all the materials to the new model and maybe changed some of the materials. And I added a circle mesh to act like shadow and animate its scale values to sync with the legs. I had rendered the animation in 12 frames per second. Set it from here. And then scale down the keyframes. For example, if you have your walk cycles of 30 frames and 30 FPS, then it would be 12 frames for 12 FPS. Finally, add a cool background and render the animation and call it a day. You can use these techniques to make a whole infographic explainer video for clients. The best part is, it renders an EV, so you can easily render this without taking too much time. This concludes the video. Hope you find it helpful. And if it does, please like the video and subscribe the channel for more.